So we have talked about dynamic memory allocation. We went through all the uh, things that are required for you to um, be able to do uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation safety with no leaks or, or uh, uh, crashing uh, programs or uh, crashing computers when it's the uh, worst gets to worse. Um, also, uh, we talked about uh, member functions and privacy, and we learned that if uh, we, and we learned that if we uh, um, put the data and behavior together, uh, we can make all the methods of a function of a, of a, of a class uh, have access to the attributes, attributes specifically that class. Uh, we learned how to do dynamic memory allocation within the class using the, the uh, uh, methods of the class. And we said methods of the class are actually, I'm not going to put a, you on, on spot because it's been way, uh, over here and I don't want you to get embarrassed on the internet. <laughs> so don't look at the camera if you don't want to be seen. All right. So <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, as far as we came. Uh, we talked and we said all the attributes of the class uh, are um, also member functions, member functions, <coughs> member classes, and uh, member variables. And because I'm thinking of what I'm going to teach, these words are coming wrong. My apologies. So <coughs> all the member variables, we call them attributes. All the member functions, we call them methods. Method and attributes are object-oriented terminology for classes, and it, they have behavior and specifications. Member functions and member variables of C++ way of saying that uh, these are the actions and properties of, of uh, general class. And we uh, put these all together uh, under the rule of abstraction, which was uh, taking the things that you want and leave the things that you don't want. And um, we came right down to this point when we introduced constructors and destructors as special procedures that exist to make your objects ready when they are born, when they come to being, and that's what we call a constructor. Constructor, we mentioned they are not functions. We should remember they are not functions. Because they are not functions, they cannot be called directly. If you attempt to call it, you're not going to get an error. But the result of what looks like calling a constructor is a completely different thing that we're going to learn later. So. You cannot reuse the code inside the constructor by calling a constructor. It doesn't work that way, OK? Uh, if you want to reuse the code inside the constructor, we said you have to create another method that is probably a private method, and then call that pri private method in the constructor and other functions you want to reuse the code in. You cannot call the constructor itself. The constructor happens as soon as the object is coming to life, and the procedure will happen, makes your object ready, <clears throat> usually puts it in a safe, empty state, so um, you can deal with your object. And this is uh, and the only version of the constructors we learned with no argument constructors, the constructors that they don't have any uh, uh, attributes. Uh, they don't have any arguments. <coughs> uh, then we talked about destructors, and destructors are what we put inside the class when the class uh, is right about to die, right about to get deallocated, right about is about to get destroyed. When it goes to be out of its scope, that's when the destructor is called. So I always give this destructor and destructor uh, <clears throat> an example of coming to a table to dine. When you come to the table, you clean off the table, you set the stuff up, and you want to start dining. That's the constructor happening. You eat, you have dirty dishes and all the stuff. Right before you want to leave the room, you clean up the table, put the dishes where you were supposed to do, and <clears throat> set the table back to what it's supposed to be, and that <clears throat> becomes the destructor. So destructor is to clean up after, uh, to clean up your mess after you're gone, like before you're gone. Let's put it down, not after. Clean up your mess before you're gone, and constructor is to set up the table, set up the class for usage right after it's created. Are we okay down to this point? Then we talked about uh, the THIS, the this pointer. We said this pointer is a, a, a built-in pointer in C++ that has only meaning when it's, <coughs> when, it's, when it's 
referred to inside a member function, inside uh, a method. Other than that, this has no meaning. What this does, this tells to the function who's your owner. So essentially has the address of the class, your <coughs> the object that you are in. What is it good for? I did not explain. I just told you what it's its meaning, so when the time comes and I use it, you'll see what it is. The only thing that I used it for to just show you how it holds the address of the current object was to create the same uh, a variable inside the method with the same name of the attribute, a very stupid thing. And now because the uh, variable inside the method is shadowing the attribute, the attribute is not accessible anymore. To be able to access it, we said we use uh, this and then the arrow and then the attribute. That means you go outside of the class and from outside you look at the class. Therefore, you have access to the attribute, not the member variable that had the same name. And we ended our session on that. Are we good down to this point? Yes. So if a constructor and destructor, uh, deconstructor, destructor. Destructor. Deconstructor is the correct okay. terminology for it. Destructor is the common mistake that stuck. So that, if you say deconstructor, people are going to, I mean, like, especially the programs are going to say, ah, oh, sure, come on. So destructor, OK. Uh, so if constructor and destructor are not functions, how can we categorize them? What is the category of them? What They're are constructors. Them? and okay. destruct. Okay. Okay. They're constructors and destructor. Destructor is only one. We don't have two of them. Okay? <clears throat> There's a name for it. They call it special functions. I don't want to call it functions because as soon as you say function, students want to call them. Okay? They call it specialty functions. I don't want to call it that. I call them for they are what they are. Constructors, it means I can have many different uh, overloads of a constructor. We learned only the no argument one, or they call it default constructor. And we have only one destructor. We don't have any, destructor is only one. And that's what it's called, <coughs> okay? We good? Yes. Take it, take it from yeah. me, okay. So we need to actually build a function of the constructor and deconstructor, right? Or it's provided in the library. No, you do it. So we build like a whole. You build the, the, the constructor and put the code in it that you want the object to be when it's created. So sometimes, let's say, let's say I want to create a class for, let's say I want to create a class for number of quantity, uh, uh, an item inventory. Let's say I want to create a class for item inventory, okay? And I would say, when the item in an inventory appears for the first time, I want it to have quantity of one. By default, it has zero, right? I want to overwrite that. I want the item, when it's coming to life, to have specific things. I want to have this prefix for the SKU or UPC, whatever you call it. Uh, I want the, the, the quantity to be this. I want the location to be this. I want, I want specific things for all the items that are in my inventories, okay? And that's the constructor because just setting them to default will not do. You want to have more things. Or let's say you want to create a class that represents an array. Arrays in C language suck because you don't know what their size is. You don't, like, if you can go, pa pa go pass through its index and you get out and ruin memory, you can create actually your class that rep replaces an array in C. You can do that, okay? But to do that, if I want to do that when I'm creating an array, I'm not going to create a static array. I can actually make it dynamic. So when the array is getting created, I want it to have this many elements. Things like that, these are the things that you do in construct. So constructor is to make a class feel and look what you want when it gets in getting created. And it has many different shapes. We only learned the uh, no argument or the default one. And the structures are only one. There are, no two, two, there are not two different ones. And it's all just to clean up the class, the mess of the class when it's done. Are we good? 
today, now that we have done the review, today we're just gonna learn, we're gonna come step back now that we know what uh, member functions are. We're gonna actually show you how to uh, uh, write, uh, format your output on a screen and how to write foolproof data entry. So uh, the user, if does something crazy, you can detect it and, and, and prevent them to do something like that. Uh, so, I'm gonna start with uh, something very simple and straightforward. So, let's do this. I'm gonna, that obviously, first I'm gonna uh, create my uh, uh, main. Okay, first of all, I have to tell you what C in and C out are. I have to tell you what C in and C out are. This is nothing. I made a mistake. So, there we go. Sorry, I have to put this mouse over here and keep moving it so my screen doesn't go off in here, okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is a class called iOS, okay? Input Output System. And we talked about inheritance, right? We said that a motorcycle is a bicycle that yada, 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 right? So I don't have to explain to you how a motorcycle works. If you know how a bicycle works, I simply tell you motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. Then everything is gonna get crystal clear and then we can go to, to details. It's the same thing over here. iOS has all the basic input output needs in it. It's mother of two classes. These two classes are called O stream and I stream. Now, the I stream is instantiated into in IO stream header file. They actually create an instance of it. They called it CIN. The O stream is instantiated in IO stream. It's called C out. You'll see soon how. So C in and C out are objects. Like you create an employee, you say employee E, okay? Employee E is I stream C in. C in is an instance of I stream. Its job is to get stuff from console, okay? It's an object. Therefore, it has properties, it has, it has attributes, it has methods, it has uh, methods that change its content. We call it uh, setters or modifiers. Okay, not only for C and C out, for all classes that we have. And met it has methods that does, uh, so changes them. It has methods that uh, uh, checks for its status, queries if it's in a good state or not. Those are called queries. So you can query it, you can set it to different things. We're gonna see it soon. So that's C in. C out is an object of O stream. And the O stream object over there uh, the, uh, the C out object is an instance of O stream. So, so anything you do to it, it's exactly what is defined in O stream and obviously in iOS. O stream is everything iOS is. I stream is everything iOS is and more. So iOS with output on, on screen, printing on screen capabilities become C out. I O stream with capabilities to receive from console becomes C in. Are we clear on this? So first let's understand this. Are we okay? All right. Now, 
I told you that C out is an instance of O stream, but if you try to create another instance of O stream, if you write O stream my C out, semicolon, to create a new thing, it won't allow you. It's a technique, we call it singletons. Singletons are, are uh, objects that, classes that can have only one instance, okay? Actually, O stream is not singleton, it has few more, but, but let's assume it that way. If you try to instantiate it, it won't allow you. Why? Because C out is something unique. It's your console, it's your terminal that you're printing on. You cannot have three of them. It doesn't make sense, right? So because of that, they actually created the object for you and made it a real global object that everybody have access to it. So as soon as you include IO stream, you have access to C out that is created. That's why if you print in one page, in one file, in one function on a screen and print in another uh, function, the cursor follows because they are both the same objects printing on the same thing. Same thing for C in. It's a global object out there. We're gonna learn how to do it, do it today, okay? Not a singleton, that's three, four, five, but how to create a global object so we can have access everywhere. You will see. So that's that one. So one of the, like, let's say I have a value, I'm gonna call it int uh, v1, and let's set it to uh, one, two, three, four, and I have an integer v2, and I'm gonna set it to, uh, let's say, uh, three, four, okay? So I have two variables that are initialized to one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, back there, you cannot see it, right? You want me to make it big? Yeah, I, I just noticed that looking at the screen. Uh, um, by the way, there are lots of empty seats. I don't beat anybody. Ask these people, have I ever, ever slapped you in the face? No, come forward. Close the screen if you have space. Anyways, you always go sit at the very... <laughs> okay, is it good now? Uh, all right, so. Now if I go C out, V1, and print it out, there's absolutely no problem, it, it gets printed out, right? But what if I want this value to be printed in 20 spaces, like you did in printout? You put percent 20 something, right? In here, I have to set the C out to have the next printout in that thing. So I have to say C out dot width, and I put over here 20. It means next, what is that C out over there doing? Okay, there's one C out over here standing alone. Let me see if I can wipe it out. Uh, huh. Okay, that's better. All right. Next print will be in 20 spaces. And to just show you what I mean, instead of V2, I'm gonna make it a character, uh, and I'm gonna make it an array of, say, whatever, uh, 31, and I'm gonna uh, set it to, what do I set it to? I'm gonna set it to, um, um, hello. Okay, it doesn't, uh, don't forget that C, C out insertion operator is a polymorphic operator. It doesn't care what you are printing in it. It will do the thing that it's supposed to do. So in here, I'll go C out V1 and stuff like that. I'm gonna go C out uh, V2. And we know that the outcome is gonna be this. Nothing's gonna happen because see, that is happening after. Now I'm gonna bring these two back here, down here, okay? Now after I set the width, so next print will be done in 20 spaces. If I run this, you will see that V1 is printed in 20 spaces, but V2 did not. Which means for every single print, this, is, this sounds painful now, but later on you'll see, because you design each object to show itself, you go through the designing of how it's gonna get printed and you don't have to face it again. In printf every single time, you have to rewrite the whole format over and over. 
in here we are not doing this. We set up our, our objects to get printed in a proper way, and that's it. It's more painful, I understand, but that's uh, one of the prices that we have to pay for object-oriented design. So for those who didn't do this, please do it, OK? All right. So uh, the next thing I want to do over here would be um, if I want the other one to get printed, see out dot width of 40, I can do that. And now the other one is get, getting printed in a width of 40, as you see. Are we OK with this? It doesn't matter what you have. So I will remove the second one just to demonstrate that, hey, it is really the next one that is getting printed in 20 spaces, not V1. So next, and in here I'm going to say V1 uh, will be printed in 20 spaces, but not V2. OK? So that's that. So that's a dot width dot cpp. For those of you who have heard the word manipulators, don't use them for now. Okay. First, learn this. We'll talk about manipulators later. Okay. If you, if you, anyways, uh, this is something that I have to tell you. You can use. In OP244, you can use anything you want to do your work other than standard template library and string objects. Okay? String C++ object, not C string. String object. These things you are not supposed to use because we want you to improve your coding techniques. Okay? In 345, that's all what you're gonna all you're gonna do. In 345, it's only STL and things like that. So believe me, you're gonna learn it in 345. In 244, we are not using them. Other than that, you can use anything you want if you can explain it to me in a code review. So you had something to me, and I see this is not something that I taught. I'm going to have a code review to you. Explain to me what this code that you have written is doing. If you can't explain, zero. Because that means you use something that you have no idea what it does. So if you know what it does, by all means, I'm glad to see it. Yes. should assume they don't exist in the language. You know there is a go-to as well in, OK, we don't use it. OK. These are very good points. Thank you. You are not allowed to use break, continue, go-to, or more than one return statement in a function. If your functions have two, three return statements in them, sorry, you're going to lose marks. OK? Because three return statements is essentially go-to. Go to to the end of the function. I don't want you to. Re each function must have one point of entry, one point of exit, not three points of exit. Okay? So, of course, when you become a professional programmer and your company allows you, please use 50 returns, not here. Okay? All right? So, these are the things no break, no continue, no go to, no return statement or exit function. You cannot use these things, OK? Other than that, and break in switch, of course you can use, because break was made for switch, and its side effect is now. <laughs> so of course, you've got to use it in switch, but not here. Thank you. OK? Because that's going to, I'm, I'm doing you a favor by not letting you to do it, because it creates such bugs that they had to change the, that was the reason that object-oriented came to be, because of those spaghetti codes that you could not trace what goes where. So, OK, anyway. So that's that. Now, just to show you how we can actually print these values properly, if I actually want to, if I want to, let's say I want to put a star before and after in a width, OK, to print something within a width. If I want to do that, I cannot do it like this. Okay. 
I cannot, I cannot print something like this. This automatic thing that prints two things kills me. Anyway, so, so if I do something like this now, if I say over here, see out dot width, and I put 20, you will see that what's going to get printed in 20 spaces is the star, not 1, 2, 3, 4. So the star, the first star, the first asterisk is printed in 20 spaces, and then the rest is, is printed. Remember, width only works for the next printout. Okay? So it's not the next C out statement, next printout. And printout is done by insertion operator. So next insertion operator is affected by it. Therefore, if I wanted that to be printed in a specific width, I had to do it this way. Now, if I print it, I'm going to have the value within 20 spaces between two stars. Got it? All right. Next thing, how can I make this left justified? Left justified is done using a modifier, which means if I want that thing to get printed left justified, this is what I do. And I'm going to alternate between the two examples so you know it has nothing to do with what we are printing. The format applies to any insertion operator. So now if I set over here C out dot uh, set F, it means set the flag the output flag to iOS. So this is a constant value defined in the iOS uh, class, the parent. So I'm going to say iOS left. Now it means the next, next one is going to be left justified, not right justified. We OK with this? And please pay attention. If I do a print again for we v1 with 20, you will see that the second one is still left justified. So remember, left justification, right justification sticks. Width is only for the next. But set f sets the flag. It sets a flag in the attribute that from now on, everything has to be left justified. So remember that. Because of this reason, it's an extremely good habit to always Unset what you have set after you did your printout. So come over here and say unset f left, which means go back to what you were before, whatever you were. Okay? Remember, any flag that you set after you're done, unset it. Then your class is going to go back to its uh, uh, original state. So, so now if I do it like this, you will see that the next one actually goes back to what it was before. You follow? OK? Are you OK? Yeah. You look, it looks like you're, you're suffering from something. Everything's good? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, like that. <laughs> you want me to call somebody, 911 or something? Oh, you're, you're fine. OK. Sorry about that. <laughs> Can't do anything about that, you know? <laughs> So that's that one. The next thing that uh, we, we can do with this is this. So, um, so just, uh, just to show you, you can uh, force things to be right justified, right justified if you want to. If something is by default left justified, you can always set it to right justify. So it works the same way. So I can, I can get this one. And go right. Obviously, because by default is right, you don't see much of a difference. But when it's left and you want to set it to right, that will happen. So right justify does it like that. What you can do. Um, uh, other things that you can do is, uh, let me bring the first one in. No, this is okay. Like, let me actually separate these so we know what we are dealing with here. So I'll do this.
Okay? So next thing would be filling the spaces with what we want. So if I want the, the space to be filled with something, I'm going to set the fill character to whatever I want. Say, what do I put? Give me something. Let's say carrots. So if I do something like this, now what is printed, it's going to fill the spaces with the character that you want. There is no unfill. If you want it to go back to space, simply set the fill to space afterwards. Okay? So now if I want to, if I want to actually make this thing not to have that fill anymore, so if I now go V2, it's the same. And I don't need to have a fill over here. So V1 and V2 are both filled with those things. Now if I want to remove it for the next one, first I have to say cout.fill to space and then do this. So now it's back to filled with space. Are we OK with this? That's left and right justification. It has nothing to do with what you are printing. Anything you print will affect it. Are we OK with this? All right. Any primitive value. Yes. They're not inside. There is no inside. You don't have a class inside another. I said, I said they are inherited. That's a, actually a good question. That's the fault of teaching these things before we teach you inheritance. Inheritance is rebuilding design. You don't put something in the belly of another. If I do that, then iOS will change. If I have an iOS and put an iOS stream inside of it, then iOS is not iOS anymore. You follow what I'm saying? So when I have an IOS, in my code, I'm going to say IO stream is an IOS that does stuff, which means IOS carries this specification of IOS. IO stream will carry this specification of IOS, but it's not inside of it. OK? All right. The reason that you want these things because it affects C in and C out, you'll see later on. But OK, so that's that. So this is, uh, this one was uh, B dot, uh, did I put dot for that one? Damn it, let me fix that. So it's going to be B dash uh, with fill left right. Dot CPP. Are we okay with this? Down to this point? Ladies and gents? Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. I removed the V2 from this thing, and I'm just going to go with V1. What happened? Suddenly everybody started talking. Something happened over there that I'm not aware of. Are we good? People? All right. So running the same thing, it's only with the integer thingy, right? Now I'm going to change that integer to a double. OK? And I print that. This is what we get. OK? So it works the exact same way. What happened? Oh, you actually put uh, two digits after the decimal point, OK? But let's take a look at this. Uh oh, give me so soon. <laughs> if I do something like this, uh, then that's crazy. So C out. Insertion operator on double, it has a mind of its own. It always prints the most efficient way of printing something. So you can't say. So you remember the other one had two digits after the decimal point. 
Now take a look. If I write this, if I write the value of pi over here, and if I run this, you will see that now it's giving you five, six digits after the, five digits after the small point. So again, it has a mind of its own. To take that mind of its own away, you can tell to the insertion operator and see how, hey, stick to one thing and don't mess around, okay? How do we do that? I want to have a fixed type of format when I'm printing. So, and that sticks too. It's not like width. So you can actually say C out dot <coughs> set flat to iOS fixed. That means from now on, print it how you print it no matter what I do. So it's going to be always like that. And as you see, it puts six digits after the decimal point, And anything you print, it's going to be that way. OK? I can fix that by setting what I want the precision to be. So if you want the precision to be two digits after the decimal point, you can do it. You can say C out dot precision and put two, like three digits after the decimal point, which means it's going to print it with three digits. Okay? And if you have the value set to something else, if I say V is set to um, 1.23, something like that, it still prints it. Oh, 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 no. It still prints it with three digits, but fills the rest with zero. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? That's floating point numbers, real numbers, and how to print them with precision that we want. Okay? Yes, sir. Fixed? If I don't, if you don't put fixed, based on what the size of the number it's going to be, it's going to change its shape. You saw I printed different values without fix, and each one got printed in a different way. Big number became scientific notation. Small number had uh, six digits after the decimal point. The one that has a big number, and so it does it by itself. We don't want to do that. Okay? It just has a mind, it has a mind of its own. It has mind of, of its own, and we don't want that. Fix means what I said. Be always that, and don't change it. Got it? Uh, No, no, all. So other than width, everything else sticks. Other than, other than width, everything else is permanent. Because you are all calling this, you are calling the same function set f for all of them, and precision is the same. Precision is uh, a fixed place here. Okay? And before somebody calls me on this, let me put it on quiet. All right. Are we okay with this down to this point? Ladies and gentlemen, you okay? So, C printing real numbers. Uh, So, by no means I finished the whole thing about C out. Please go read the stuff over there and see what it is. There are many things over there you need to know, okay? Uh, but it's enough for you to, to quick start and do whatever you want to do. Um, yes, sir. No fixed? You, you say, could I use precision instead of? Fixed makes C out always print in the same way. Precision means how many digits after the decimal. It has nothing to do with each other. So you can show something in scientific notation with three digits after the decimal point. Okay. Remember, fixed means I want the format to be the same. If you don't do it, your precision doesn't mean anything because it changes it for to whatever is it's good. Okay. 
remember that. So is the lighting changes is it still gonna be for every row? Pardon me? Why why these changes? Like is it just is it still gonna be for why change the position? Yeah, like you said. It depends. You wanna print money, you do two digits after the decimal point. If you wanna print pi, you want nine digits after the decimal point. Depending on what you want to print, you change it. If you don't want to, just do it at the beginning and don't. If you want everything to be one digit after the decimal point, just set it once and don't touch it. If you want to change it, change it. That's it. It's not that why you want to, it's if you want to. Okay? Hello. All right. So these objects, C in and C out, these objects, seen and see out, are extremely shy. Seen and see out are extremely shy. With C in, you know that how we work with it. So I'm uh, just going to go back to that in thingy. So I'm going to say R is double is up to double uh, num. OK? And let's uh, initialize it. And then I'm going to say see out, enter. And then I'll go C in num. That's what we do, right? And I'm going to say C out. You entered. You entered. No. Now, I'm not formatting it. I don't care about the format. I'm focusing on C in. So what it prints, I don't care. OK? Are we OK down to this point? So I want to, when I say they are shy, this is what it is. See in and see out. See out the shyness for it, I cannot demonstrate yet. We'll find out later on. But see in, I can. See in when you tell it, please give me a double. If what you give it cannot be converted to a double, it's not going to talk to you anymore. Go to hell. I don't want to talk to you anymore. You're giving me garbage. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. That's what happens. Show. Let me show you. So I am entering, I'm getting the double over here, let's say, three times. Whoa, that's four times. So that's one. That's two. I should have put it in a loop. I put the loop, right? I put it in a loop. That's better to put it. Let's let's put it in a loop. Four I set to uh, size G I set to zero, I less than four and I plus plus. Let's say for some unknown reason. I want to get few numbers and keep printing back to you. So let's see if you can actually follow orders. <laughs> OK? So in here, I'm going to say i plus 1. And go to dash. So now in here, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 1. 1 is a good double. You entered. Wait a minute. Stupid compiler. All right. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go one. One is a good number, right? If I go three, that's a good number, right? If I go, that's a good number. If I go 1.5, that's a good number, and it finishes, right? So I got it four times, correct? Now take a look. As soon as I put something that C in doesn't make sense with, it's not going to talk to you anymore, which means the action of C in anything to your C is like, don't talk to me, you're an idiot. Uh, you, uh, you told me double, you give me one. What am I supposed to do with this, right? So that's what it is. So when something bad happens to C in, you have to apologize to it. That's, that's, real, that's real. I'm not joking. I have to really say, oh, I'm so sorry. Please, let's, can we talk? Can we be friends again? OK, so this is what we do. So how do we do it? So first of all, so in here I'm going to call it DCN is shy. Try, try typing bad values and see. 
<laughs> okay? So how do we fix it? If C in fails, C in can actually present itself, change itself to goodness or badness. So if you say if C in, just that, it actually tells you if I'm in a good mood or not. So I'm going to say if C in. I'm going to say you enter this. Else, it means you BS the C in and doesn't want to listen to you anymore. So the very first thing you do is what? Apologies. So in here, you're going to say C in the, let's get clear about things. I am so sorry. OK? That's the first thing. Now, C in talks back to you. So the first thing is that if you don't clear it, Nothing works in C. You cannot call any of its functions. You cannot do anything with it. Okay. Now that I have done this, remember buffered. <laughs> remember buffered entry from IPC 144. What do we call buffered entry? Do you remember that? You mean clear the buffer? Or? Yes. Why we clear the buffer? Because we had buffered entry. What is buffered entry? What is input buffer? The keyboard. The keyboard is input buffer. What does it mean? When we say something is buffered, what does it mean? No, no, no. Everybody knows how to clean the buffer, but they don't know what does it mean, buffered entry. Buffered entry. Huh? Holding values for temporary use. Not for temporary use, for use. <laughs> Not temporary. Buffered entry, it means anything you enter will all stand in line waiting to go in. OK? If you're gonna if you're gonna have a lineup in front of ladies' washroom and there are ladies standing and there's one man in the middle, as soon as it gets to that man, no one can go in. Because the gentleman cannot go to ladies' washroom. Everybody's stuck. You have to ignore the person off the thing. Now the ladies can go in, right? That's clearing the buffer. If you have bad data, you have to take that bad information out. And we're going to tell to CN, hey, CN, I'm sorry, just ignore uh, lots of garbage until you hit the backslash N, which means keep reading. If somebody enters more than 10,000 characters and still not giving the good thing, let's see him fail, OK? But, but if it hits backslash N before 10,000 entries, then it actually means, OK, I, it, you kind of flush the toilet, gone. It's gone now. It's ready for the next person to come in. So you say, and in here you say, and then what what you say over here? See out. I said W. Okay, try again. Right? So now if I do this, and, and obviously the loop is gonna increase by one, so I have to go back. So in here, I'm going to say I minus minus, just to make sure that I'm receiving exactly four. OK? So now what happens, uh, this loop becomes kind of foolproof. OK? Why? Because if I run the program now, enter a double, I'm going to say one. It's going to say I say W, and then it reduces the counter so it remains on one. Right? Now I'm going to put over here 2.3. Now it says good. Now I'm going to say how about now? or something like that, and I hit enter, it says I said double. So 2.2, 3.3, and I have a, an extra dot over there that it says I said double, so that I've got to fix that one, so I'm going to go two, and then we're good, and we're done. Okay? So that's how CN works. If you just call ignore with nothing in it, it means ignore the next character, whatever it may be. But if you, it's, it's overloaded. If you call it with two arguments, and it's only two or one, it's not like half. Is. If, if you put ignore 20, it means ignore 20 characters. You cannot say ignore backslash n. If you say ignore backslash n, what is the code of backslash n? Anybody knows? I think it's 10, right? Ask the code of backslash n, I think it's 10. 
So ignore, we'll ignore 10 characters. The first argument is an integer. You cannot put the first, like lots of people say ignore backslashes. There is no such thing, ignore backslashes. The first one, the first one is uh, uh, number of characters and the second one is backslash n. If you only put number of characters, that's number of characters. If you put uh, uh, backslash n or anything else, it's gonna stop at that. So you can say ignore up to question mark if you are reading something and you want to, or if you are reading a delimited information which is tab separated or comma separated. Let's say I, I'm reading comma separated values. So I'm gonna say uh, read, uh, if, I, if, if, I, if my data starts at ignore, I'm gonna say ignore up to comma, it ignores everything up to comma, and then it reads the next, something like that. Anyways, so ignore stops at the delimiter. and eats it and throws it away, yes? Can you see in the input uh, data from file, like the input FSMS? Deep breath. <sighs> Halfway through the semester, I'll tell you how. OK. All right. Now, teaching how to read from files takes exactly 35 seconds. OK? And I'll when the time comes. Maybe I'm going to teach it to you. No, not today. Oh, work today. So you're saying uh, that's C in. So you do C in, it reads a string. It doesn't make any difference. But the difference is that it stops at space. That's the problem with it. We'll fix that today, too. OK? So it's polymorphic. The extraction operator in C in, the extraction operator in C in extracts anything. So if you put C string over here, C string will be read. The only problem is that the extraction operator's delimiter, what is a delimiter? It's a separator. So a delimiter for C string is not at the end, right? The delimiter for extraction operator is white space, any white space. And space is one of those because of tab, backslash R, things like that, backslash, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, white space characters. So, so we're going to fix that too. Well, give me a second. So, okay. So now that I have this thing, I can actually write foolproof entry. So in here, I'm going to say uh, E how to apologize to see it. OK? To do that, what I will do I'm going to start something today that is going to continue till the end of the rest, end of the semester, and then in OP three, four, five when I teach it. So I carry a toolbox, and I, I create a toolbox, and I carry it without me. Okay, this toolbox is a module called Utils, and I start developing it now with two things that I start now, and I keep going. Okay, and you are welcome to use it and add your own features and carry your own toolbox, so you don't have to rewrite the codes that you're having throughout the semester in different workshops, okay? Uh, and when you're doing the submission, if you add a U to the beginning of your submission, so it's like workshop 3P2 if you're doing, it becomes 244 slash uh, workshop 3 slash UP2 underlines that AA instead of P2. If you do UPT, it submits your utils too, okay? Keep that in mind. So. So I create a utils, mo utils module, module, and in here I'm going to say add. I'm going to add a class because I'm lazy. And in here I'm going to call it utils, and I'm going to click on OK. So it creates the header file and the CPP file for me. And then I will add the, uh, the safeguards and, and, and the, uh, what should we call it, uh, and, and the namespace and all the good things that it's supposed to have to the beginning and the end of it. And also, because we are not dealing with classes yet, and I want everything to be accessible, for now, I'm gonna set this to a struct so I, have act so I can have access to it. Then in here, I'm gonna create uh, um, a, a function called get int. So I'm gonna call it int, 
get int, and it's going to receive an integer. And that's the function I'm going to create. I'm going to come in uh, utils. In here, I'm just going to add namespace Seneca. And you know that that's how we deal with modules. So now I can actually create the definition for this in here and, and see how I can do it. So to create get int, what I'm going to do, first of all, when you're supposed to return an integer, you return an integer. So integer, uh, what do we call this? Yeah. So I'm going to return a value. So I'm going to, shoot. I have to keep moving this thing so it doesn't log me off. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, so I have a value and I set it to null. I'm going to say return the value. So that's essentially what my, my, my get int is supposed to do. So what I need to do over here is to first get the value. So I'm going to see into the value. And hopefully, people are going to put some kind of a message before this. Obviously, because I'm using C in, I'm going to need to have uh, the, the namespace and the IO stream added to this because I'm using it. Remember, only add header files where you need them, not anywhere else, okay? Just don't put, just in case header files, it's very bad for you, it's bad for your health, okay? So now, I'm gonna say while, I can say not cin, it means if cin failed. But cin also has a method we can use. I can write actually say fail, save. These are all the same, three different ways. You can say see in, you can say not see in, you can say fail, you can say not fail. So you can use it any way you want. Many different ways to do the same thing. So I'm gonna say, if seeing failed people, if seeing failed, it means that I have invalid integer received, and I'm gonna say retry, right? Retry. And I'm going to go to new line and do it like that, OK? So I'm, sh I'm telling them to do that. Then comes the apology. So I'm going to say scene.clear. And then I'm going to say scene.ignore. Ig if I can type it, ignore some characters and go up to backslash n. So everything clean and nice. And now I'm going to see in again, right? So I keep doing that until the user comes to its senses and actually <laughs> gives me an integer. So val actually holds an integer, right? So that becomes the foolproof version of it. Now the next thing. When I enter 12 in the keyboard, so if I want to enter 12 in the keyboard, what are the keys that I, that I, that I hit on the keyboard? One and two. If I want to enter 12 on the keyboard to enter it into any application, what are the keys I hit? 1, 2, and enter. 1, 2, and enter. 1, 2, and enter, right? OK. 1 and 2 are integers, right? Is new line enter an integer? No. So it remains in keyboard, correct? That's the best case scenario. Somebody can say 12 is the number I want to enter, hit enter. So 12 is still red, but there's lots of garbage afterwards. So you have minimum one new line in the keyboard waiting or more, right? So it's always safe even after a successful entry. I do ignore to make sure keyboard is out of all garbage. The reason that you do C in back to back and it works is that by default extraction operator skips all the leading spaces. So what happens is that when you say two have two scenes back to back, the first one gets an integer, the second one gets a double, the first one gets an integer, leaves a new line, the next one wants to get the double, skips the new line because by default it wants to skip the white spaces and does it. But I can clean it up, make sure if somebody wants to get a single character, it's not going to fail. If you write C in integer and then you do C in, uh, do C in dot get, which is a function that receives one character. If you do that, then it's going to pick up a new line. You don't want that, right? So I, don't, I want the keyboard to be completely clean after I go. So 
wipe keyboard. Keyboard, please, okay, of everything. Now this is a foolproof uh, data entry for an integer. Now, problem is that if I want to use it here in my program, so if I want to actually have, oh, I put make it a double. Let's make let's make sorry, <laughs> double. Get double. <laughs> my apologies. Double. I was giving an example on that one. Let's make this one double. Is it double over there? Yeah. So this is double. You are telling me why did you change the integer over there to integer? But because in the other class I gave integer example. In this class I'm making it double. So double. Same thing. And I think the rest is the same, right? Are we good? So now if I actually want to get the double in here, I have to, I have to first obviously include, include, I have to include uh, utils, that's obvious. I have to say using namespace Seneca, that's obvious. Then I have to say over here utils, let's say ut, first instantiate it, then in here I have to say C out enter a double. And go num is set to ut dot get double, right? Which sucks. And then C out. Right? I don't want that. So how can I create an actual global variable called ut that can be used anywhere utils.h is included? Okay? Global variables we learned in C language. We called it global, although it wasn't global at all. It was a lie. So if I go to utils over here, I can create a global variable in here, all right? It's in a CPP file. I create the, the global variable, right? Any problem with that? No, right? Problem is that only in utils.cpp this is global. It has a file scope, not a global scope. No other file other than this knows it. So how come when I wrote functions in C language in a separate file, everybody had access to it? How did I accomplish that? How do you make a function in another file available in some file? Seriously, should I bring the microphone? Huh? How? Including what? So it has a header file. What is inside the header file? It's not a function inside the header file. Prototype, you bad people. When I want to make a function available in another class, in another file, I add its prototype to the other file any way I can, either with an include or I literally pull the prototype. Are we okay with that? Do we understand that? We can create a prototype for a variable too. I can actually create a prototype for a variable, any type of variable too. So in here, let's say I have a const double value pi and I want it to be this value and I want that pi to be available everywhere too. So what do I do? I go to the header file that belongs to this which is this one. Then in here I will write the exact same things without their initialization because I want it to be their prototype. So in here, I want to tell to everyone else, hey, there is a utils called ut. The problem is that if I write it like this, it's gonna create another one. I don't want that. So to make these prototypes, you add one keyword in front of it. Extern. So when you write external over there, this, this means 
This is not a declaration. I'm just letting you know that there is a utils somewhere that this is introducing it to you. So the compiler won't get you an error. It's exactly like a prototype for a variable. So these are essentially prototypes, prototypes like a pro like like a function proto prototype for variables for instances instances of variables of types. So any instance of a type can be external thing. Now in my program, ut actually means something. Why? Because in that header file, I, I, in utils.h, I'm saying there is a ut of type utils, use it. Okay? And when I call it, it's going to call it, and life is beautiful. Enter a double, I put garbage, it's going to say invalid, invalid int, seriously. Where is it? So if I do it like this, and I hit enter, it's about a double. If I put one, two, three, point four, five, that's what I get. Are we okay? So that's foolproof entry for uh, a, an integer. How about strings? How can I get a string? Okay, so. Strings are arrays, arrays, pointers. I cannot return a string, but I can always create a function that passes the address of the, so essentially puts the values in the address. So in this utils class of mine, I can create something like void get C string. And in this get C string of mine, uh, let, let's put CSDR, CSC string. I pass a character pointer string. And I read it from the console and put it in there. Okay? Not only that, I can tell it how far to go. Because that's, you what, that's what you always want. You don't want infinite stuff to come in. You have an array, you want to make sure it's not more than 50 characters, right? So, what do you do? This is what you do. You, you first of all, I'm going to add that function definition over there. So, what you do over here is this. <clears throat> Instead of calling the extraction operator, you call a function of a method of C in called get line. Get line essentially is like ignore. Ignore ignores characters until it hits backslash n. Get line reads character until it hits backslash n. Of course, you can change the backslash n to whatever you want, like ignore. But if you don't mention anything, it is backslash n in get line. So in get line, I can actually say over here, cn dot get line, put it in the string up to len plus one, unlike C functions, get line knows when you say 81, that one is for the null. So the length that we say, because when we create an array of 51 characters, uh, it means 50, a, a string with 50, length of 50, right? Get line includes that zero to it. So you have to say the length of, it says give me the length, I'll take care of it, okay? So that's the length. And in here, you can either put the delimiter or not, uh, because if you don't put it, default is backslash n, but I'll put it over here just for you to remember. I don't need to put that backslash n. It's the same. So let's do it like this. Same as. So these two are the same. Okay? So now it's going to get it. Now I'm going to say, while c in dot fail exactly like the other one how does it fail is there anything that is not string anything you type is a string right well, how does it fail if they type too much if get line reaches the limit and doesn't hit the backslash and it says hey you are entering too much too many values i'm not gonna i don't like it i'm not gonna do anything like this 
So now if it actually fails, then you gotta go through the thing. So we're gonna say C out maximum of len characters, please. And I'll go to new line. Obviously the, the commands, can, oh. let's follow the same thing, cares retry. Uh, just to be consistent. It's, it's always important to be consistent in what you do. So then I'm gonna go C in dot clear, exactly like the other one. Then I'm gonna say C in dot ignore. All the garbage that we have to up to backslash n. And then what do I, what do, I do? I do C in get line again. And I keep doing this. All right, seeing get line again. Oh, what am I? Get line. Uh, len char uh, into str, len characters plus one, and that's that. And because get line reads up to backslash n and eats and throw away the backslash n, I don't need to flush afterwards. It is flushed automatically. And now. <coughs> I can actually change my code over here having this function. I can say over here, uh, uh, printf, oh, <laughs> printf, sorry, C out. I went to IPC for a second, okay? Uh, your name. Now I can have over here a uh, character name, say 21. Now in here I can say uh, ut dot get c string into name for 20 characters, right? Now it gets a c string, and I'm gonna say uh, name. Please enter a double, and I'm gonna keep going. So let's make it 10, so we can fail it and see what happens. So now if I run this program, if I didn't make any boo-boos on the way, <clears throat> now in here I'm gonna say fardat Manlu. It's gonna say maximum of 10 characters, retry. I'm gonna say Fred Soleil, I think it's 10. There you go, Fred Soleil, please enter a double, 12, and you enter 12. Are we good? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to get uh, Strings. So I don't think there's anything else to cover. If you are not logged in into your computers, get logged in right now. Only uh, Microsoft Edge, please. Let me save this. So. Log into Edge, open up the course, go to OP244Z. Uh, I am bringing up the quiz. You have 10 minutes to do it. You finish the quiz. I know you're in pain. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So you've got to have the quiz. You, you do the quiz until done. Let me pause the recording because I don't want to do all these things.